Good afternoon, my friends. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications so I can be with you forever. I'm going to be putting my email in the description, so if you want any advice with meditation, tarot readings, music production lessons, anything at all, please feel free to contact me. I generally charge $40 an hour for any service that you might want, so keep that in mind when contacting me. So, today I'm going to be talking about a subject that has gotten a lot of controversy, especially amongst the martial arts community, if you want to call it that. And this is the subject dealing with chi, right? So this is basically a big determinant of what's being propagated as McDojo, uh, you know, scenarios basically that have been popping up a lot and they obviously do exist in a vast majority. Um, I'm not discounting that. In fact, I find the McDojo phenomenon, if you don't know what that term is, it's basically any sort of fighting gym or specifically any kind of teacher that is um, educating people in martial art forms that are basically complete bullshit or not necessarily complete bullshit, but generally bullshit. We'll just call it that. And this is a problem, obviously, because it's, you know, scamming people for money. Primarily, that's the main reason why it's done. And it's also leading people in improper techniques in martial arts and also in energetic concepts, which isn't really talked about as much because people tend to disregard energy work or chi work, if you want to call it that, as being... Um, superfluous, non-existent, or if you're going to be learning a system within those realms, it's, they'll like to think of it as only a philosophical context, which it isn't. It is a real practice that once you actually experience it for yourself, you, and you witness the effects it has on your physical health and your physical ability, then your perspective on it will change. However, but I'm going to emphasize the importance as to why um, you will see a lot of people who practice Qigong or Tai Chi or Neigong or Neidan or whatever, and how it doesn't apply into martial arts and professional fighting. And there is very specific reasons for that. The main one is that you know, these systems aren't really designed for fighting purposes. They can be utilized to help in martial arts. However, they are not actually used for that. They're used for health of the body. They're used for, you know, promoting physical health and vitality, not for punching people really hard. Although you could use that and I'll uh, explain that later on in this video but I want to also emphasize that I am not some kind of professional in any of these arts I just you know utilize them as a, I would say it's a hobby and it's a practice that I've done for about four or five years and I've done a lot of research and made sure that I am learning from legitimate sources and not from scammers utilizing it for you know financial benefit reasons which you have to pay attention to and you have to look out for because there's a lot of bullshit especially amongst energetic practices because energetic practices are not you know there's not a lot of quality control within those realms and it's also very difficult to assert the reality of it so i want to talk about the um, significance of it in the martial arts community because if you go on YouTube for instance and you start watching some videos of you know chi masters who utilize energy to uh, to basically block or attack opponents and you can see like their disciples flailing around the room because of the masters chi energy that they're using against them what people need to understand is what you are seeing is not actually a physical representation of that. And I think this is the problem with a lot of energetic work is that people think that when you are developing chi in your body and you're developing in the dantian, which is 
like this region here just below the belly button that you can manifest physical powers now personally i believe that that is possible and that takes a lifetime of work to require it's not something you're going to go to a retreat in seven days and learn it it's a very long process and even still the physical power that you can attain is very marginal um and if you want to become like a superhero with that kind of power um i generally do not believe that's very possible or to you know just be so determined to believe that it's possible if it does exist there's probably only like five people in history that have been able to do it you know and these can be people like jesus or the buddha or just general hermits you'll find in the forest who aren't in contact with the rest of civilization who allegedly exist i have never met a person like that but um i'm always an, have an open mind for that kind of thing however what you're going to find on youtube is a lot of tricksters and a lot of people utilizing that energy to manipulate other people and how that works is once you open up the energetic body and you're more receptive to it you will be more sensitive to it when someone else uses it against you right but it's not actually affecting you in a physical sense so when you see this you know chi master guy like utilizing his force powers to move an opponent around the room the reason why that works is partly psychological but there is an energetic component which is you know he's having an influence on his energetic body in the sense that he is you know connected in that way however the only reason why that guy is affected is because they are willingly accepting his influence on them right this is an important factor and this is the reason why when you see these masters go up against real mma fighters they get destroyed because the mma fighter obviously isn't going to accept that person's influence on them and they're not going to be affected by it because they also don't even believe in it to begin with so that's a main <coughs> aspect about that the other aspect is that when you're trying to utilize this in martial arts and you are not training in a martial art you're not practicing fighting in any way shape or form you you have no reason to expect it to actually work if you want the energy to be utilized in that way you actually have to do the thing you want and practice in that art to actually attain it this is where i would say if you're using energetic work how that could benefit your training and whatever you're doing i do it in music personally that's my main you know goal and life achievement right that's what i'm striving for my goals the martial arts and the, the energetic practices are mainly just hobbies for my main health to practice physical exercise and to you know expand my knowledge into different realms right this isn't i'm not a professional in these realms per se however i do know that within music i can utilize energetic practices to benefit my music and to give me different energetic purposes and to you know basically compose there are definitely a lot of moments when i'm improvising on the piano i can tune into an energetic groove so to speak and then i'm improvising much better than i would if i was just purely technical but the technicals are very important you have to have a grip in the reality and the physical practices the physical technicalities of whatever you're doing doesn't mean it doesn't have to apply to um martial arts or music it could be anything in your life but you need to practice those technicals if you want to influence those technicals with energetic work and this is where i think martial arts could actually benefit a lot of but right now there is this segregation of these two different forms and they sort of think each side is complete bullshit and irrelevant which is an ignorant way to look at these kinds of things when you are practicing martial arts for instance <clears throat> you can utilize energetic practices into your training and that will actually help you um 
sort of charge you up in a way, right? But it's not the the only thing that's going to help you, if that makes sense. If you only um, practice energetic works, you're not just going to become a super saiyan. You actually have to put in the physical training in order to attain that, in order to attain a more substantial power, right? This is recorded in real life, okay? If you want to read Mike Tyson's autobiography, he doesn't actually delve into real energetic practices um, in terms of, you know, traditional Chinese arts, but he is utilizing a lot of mental activity and a lot of mental visualization, which is basically the same thing. If you want to think about it, athletes do this all the time where they visualize their end goal. They are literally putting in energy into their body and visualizing it so that they're channeling energy into their body so that they can commit and achieve certain goals in mind, right? It's all interconnected, right? There's no need to segregate them into specific things. This is all chi, this is all energy that you're putting into. The fact I can move my arm up and down is energy. It's energy, a signal from my brain being transmitted through my nervous system. And the energetic body works the same way. When you utilize energy in that certain sense, you are collecting data and you are, you know, creating a, a sort of code, so to speak, in order to progress yourself and move in a different format, right? This is, um, it's difficult to sort of explain and conceptualize in a YouTube video, but this is how that kind of works. Um, Mike Tyson specifically utilize a lot of mental visualization and if you read the book um, he has his autobiography which is really good but i'm currently reading his other book iron ambition which talks more about his mentor costumato who utilized a lot of this what mike tyson calls black magic even he literally calls it that and talking about he even talks about astrology a little bit ironically and he is discussing and talking about how the mind and the mental action and the mental direction that you put into anything you do in life is going to be the foundational force of what is going to propel you to excellence and this isn't to, and also to emphasize that training is also very important physical training is very important because you need to take that mental vision and that mental energy and put it into a physical context the same thing works with chi and energy. If you don't have a physical medium to invest it in, it's not going to manifest that way. This is why I'm seeing a lot in spiritual spirituality and just these general retreats that have been happening in, you know, primarily the Western world, but it happens all over the world in general, where you have these spiritual gurus teaching, um, I don't want to say they're completely false, but they are, they're dangerous in the sense that they're giving people a false expectation as to what chi and energy is. And they think that they can, from just like a, a simple retreat, they can create an energetic force field around them that protects them, right? You can see this and they're like doing this. This doesn't mean that what they're doing doesn't exist, but you need to realize that that kind of force field isn't possible without actual training and actual discipline right what they're creating is it, it's so small and minor that it's completely in, in, insignificant um, in reality to be actually utilized especially in martial arts but this is why if you were to implement these arts and these sciences i will call them that into martial arts it would actually extremely benefit the people who are learning these techniques this is why mike tyson was literally the one punch man was because he had such mental strength and mental resolve that he could actually channel his mental energy um, into physical power right the training was an aspect of it but it was all mental the fact that he can knock out the majority of his of his opponents with one hit Something very difficult to do, I might add, was specifically because of his mental ability, his mental energy that he was expelling into his body, which is very much a concept that people are tending to forget about 
of the importance in, especially in all athletics, right? This is why people strive and become as best as possible is because they are literally pushing their body beyond the limits, right? This is a real thing that athletes are constantly proclaiming, real professional athletes, is that you have to push your body beyond its physical ability. This, is, this has more to do uh, with energy than anything, right? Because that, that's a physical impossibility. How can you go beyond your physical constraints of the body? That only happens through energy. That only happens through an energetic impulse. And if we learn to utilize the energy in a real way, in a disciplined way, in a scientific way, we can actually utilize it to our benefit. And, you know, athletes could strive and become as powerful as possible, extremely more powerful if we actually utilize it instead of it being lumped into all this fluffy spiritual garbage that's being pumped up nowadays because it's not based in any scientific fact. And of course, they're not going to be taken seriously because they are not even practicing those arts properly. They're doing it in these hippie communes um, that you, they think you can learn these in like a week and master them in a week. And then you all of a sudden have magical powers and you have magical chi energy. Like, yeah, you can open up the channels and start tuning into those kinds of frequencies. But if you think you're going to become some magician in a week overnight because you did some shrooms or you did uh, the sketchy kundalini class with some guy if you're doing if you're going to a retreat and you're learning how to do kundalini yoga and you expect to get that energy you know within a week um be careful because you might actually be causing health issues this is the problem with a lot of these energetics they don't they have no idea what the fuck they're doing to their own bodies you know you're basically when you when you do that kind of thing you're basically draining your adrenal glands and you're just expelling body into the you're expelling energy into the body that's not being recycled so you're just wasting energy thinking that you're becoming spiritually enlightened or you're becoming completely energized and then you forget that a week later when you're all drained you're like why is this happening i need to do more kundalini i need to do that's why you find a lot of these spiritual gurus and yogis and whoever the fuck these diy energy people and you can follow them on social media and they might have a sense of mental clarity and uh enlightenment if you want to call it that they they look physically drained you can see it in their bodies they don't look healthy and that's specifically because if they delve into these energetic practices like kundalini they are actually draining energy from the adrenal glands in order to feel energized but they're not actually recycling it right there's actually a process that you have to go through in order to open up the channel in the back which is the kundalini but then you actually have to bring it down back through the front and then bring it down to the dantian or the perineum which is um situated between your prostate basically um just behind your asshole that's where it is and so you can recycle that energy and then there's a another practice that involves using utilizing your essence which is the practice i'm starting to try to get into which is a difficult process and that's the thing with these arts is that it takes a long time it's a lifetime i've been doing this for five years and i'm not even i wouldn't even consider myself at intermediate level i'm still a beginner and I'm still way ahead of a lot of people because I have natural gifts, if you want to call it that. If this isn't to brag or whatever, this is just how it is. And I'm trying to utilize that. It's just like being born with gifts of athleticism. It doesn't mean anything. There's plenty of professional athletes that were born deficient in athletic ability, but then because they had a strong will and determination, they've overcome it, right? If you want to see a movie that's like that see the movie Gattaca with Ethan Hawke which is about like DNA and making uh, people genetically superior utilizing DNA uh, molecules essentially and Ethan Hawke is an inferior human because he wasn't genetically modified from birth however because of his will and his determination and his spirit he was able to overcome that threshold of being an inferior human and actually ends up being better than some of the genetically modified humans. 
that's sort of how it ends spoiler alert but whatever you it doesn't really spoil the movie that much but um so this is how these things can kind of manifest themselves right this is why you will find people who are athletically or mentally deficient in certain things but because their determination and will is stronger than the person who is naturally gifted they end up overcoming them because they know how to utilize their energy properly and utilize the training and putting into that training the energy and then they overcome the threshold right they push through that threshold this is the power of energy and how it can be utilized the problem is is that it's not seen it, it, it's seen as like this mystical esoteric concept which i think is stupid thinking energy and chi as a mystical magic it is dumb don't think of it like that just think of it as the reality of how the world works look outside and you look at the sun how do we get vitamin d from the sun it's a process of absorbing the energy from the sun and it utilizing um you know nutrients in our body and turning that into vitamin d so that way we can um utilize that for our benefit that's science right yin and yang how do we explain that scientifically well look at what an atom is made of it's made of protons and electrons literally yin and yang literally positive and negative energy this was something discovered thousands of years ago and then scientists proved that right everything that is learned about in these ancient chinese arts and these chinese sciences cannot be disproved by science they can only be either ignored or proven by science that's that's all that's happened right now right um in fact they've even changed the language in order to sort of deter from that viewpoint instead of calling them acupuncture points they call them pressure points now it's the same thing how do you prove the existence of pressure points you actually can't scientifically medically that they don't actually exist but they exist because in the energetic body they are actually real points that are were studied for thousands of years in acupuncture but it's, since it's not regarded as a legitimate science it's regarded as a pseudoscience because it's all made up in the mind it's all a placebo effect well, let me tell you something about the placebo effect. I had a headache once and I took Advil and it didn't work. Does that mean Advil is a complete placebo and it's a sugar pill and it doesn't exist? Absolutely not. Just in that context, it didn't work, which is how they utilize their way of disproving Chinese or any energetic practices as being false because in certain scenarios, it doesn't work. Just like every, every other medicine in the history of the world sometimes doesn't work there's always a chance it won't work because of certain circumstances and it works in the same way i'm kind of going off on a tangent about this subject um, but i think it's important to recognize because it's been pushed down a lot and ignored and seen as this mystical bullshit concept which i think needs to be further understood and this is why it continues to be utilized in improper methods and fake uh, schools by fake teachers and utilizing it for profit off of naive people and why people continued to be deluded and sort of set off path from the truth of how these energetic practices work and why they continue to be disregarded disregarded by the scientific community specifically because of this reason and i want to help make sure that people understand that these things do exist but they need to be understood on a deeper level and realize that they aren't as magical and powerful as they appear to be and that if we utilize them in a proper context we can actually advance further in these arts and if you are a martial artist you could advance your skill set even further because all martial artists even if they believe in it or not are still utilizing it whether they think so or not because it's like gravity you don't have to believe in it in order for it to exist you don't have to believe in chi in order for you to be able to utilize it you are always utilizing it if you're using that mental projection and you're utilizing your energy beyond your physical limitations like i said athletes professional athletes very professional um, amazing athletes are always saying and are always talking about how they push their bodies beyond their limits 
That is literally impossible if you think about it in a scientific context. The only way that is possible to push yourself beyond your physical limitations is to utilize chi or life force energy or whatever you want to call it. Now, if you want to cultivate that energy and utilize it to your benefit, that's going to help you in a huge, huge way. And this needs to be emphasized because if we want to develop ourselves to a higher degree, we need to cultivate that and stop seeing it as this mystical force and mystical energy. I'm going to talk a little bit about the physical training and the physical aspects of it because that is more important, actually. That's the foundation of how this is all going to work. Um, one of the best shows uh, I've seen that talks about this is Dragon Ball, actually. And it's very important because it, it it's a real reflection of how the real traditional martial arts in China specifically utilize these techniques in that if th this is a good way to tell if you're going to a McDojo or a fake school, um, although it's not really the determinant, but it's definitely a big red flag to watch out for is that a traditional, a real martial arts school that's very traditional, which are very hard to find because most of the traditional Kung Fu experts of the time of back way back then were all murdered by the Chinese communists, unfortunately, and most of them have gone into hiding. Most of them don't speak English either, so you can't expect to learn anything from them. And they're also come from backgrounds back in China when this information was kept secret because they wanted to attain power, right? The more people that knew this information, the harder it was to maintain control and power because other people now can utilize this. And now all of a sudden you are not as powerful anymore because other people know this information as well. And you have to come up with new techniques in order to overcome them or, or, you know, become more powerful than them. But if you watch Dragon Ball, the main emphasis from the beginning when he first starts training, uh, Goku, I'm talking about, is the physical aspect of training, is training your body, becoming strong physically. That is the foundation of all these arts. If you don't have a strong body physically, then these arts become meaningless when used in a context of martial arts. You have to first train your body physically, train yourself in the foundations of anything you're doing. If you're learning how to become a professional musician, before you compose, great melodies and all this you have to just learn the scales you have to practice the scales you have to learn the piano you have to learn the bullshit fundamentals but that's going to help you utilize the um the influence and the inspiration behind that so you can actually utilize that to the best ability because you can't expect to just use energy and then make a symphony just like that it's not going to work it's not going to manifest because you don't know the the proper context of the physical reality right but people who just focus purely on the physical technicalities they create a threshold for themselves and that's why they'll never break through and become superior or the greatest person in that field possible because they are stuck on the physical level right once you master the physical level then you can ascend and utilize the energetic concepts and the energetic constructs this is why um, you can also find that you don't even need to learn that much of the fundamentals in order to be attain godliness or the energetic principles this is why you have musicians like the beatles who were actually very good technically because they did practice a lot they were they did the physical training when they were a band playing in a German nightclub, I think it was in Germany anyway, and they were playing every single night, mastering the physical aspects, the physical fundamentals. And then once they became famous, then they started utilizing the energetic components, the spiritual components. And that's when their music went from being very solid, well-made pop music to superior, you know, spiritual godly music whatever you want to call it because then once they utilize the fundamentals and master the fundamentals then they could ascend to the next level but there's plenty of musicians and martial artists who just stay at the bottom level because they master the physical and because they don't believe in a higher power a higher source or going beyond the physicality of things 
they don't excel and they don't do anything substantial and they just, you know, become basically music teachers, martial arts teachers. And this is, there's nothing wrong with that, absolutely. But they're not going to become exceptional because they hold themselves back by not delving into energetic practices. Going back to Dragon Ball, this is exactly what happens. This is Goku's story. He masters the physicality. He masters the physical components, the fundamentals. However, he can only ascend. This is when uh, Piccolo first comes into the scene and he's the demon who is insanely powerful. Or, um, yeah, it is uh, Piccolo who does this, but there's also Tao Pai Pai, who's another one that comes before him. But um, we'll talk about Piccolo because he's the main, the first main villain of the, the show. In order for him to surpass him and become exceptionally good, he has to go and meet Kami-sama, who's like up there in the heavens, and learn from Mr. Popo the principles of energy work and of containing his ki in Japanese, which is just chi in a different pronunciation. It's the same thing. And that's the only way he could surpass him and become you know, exceptionally powerful. He was powerful before, and he was already exceptional because of his gifts as being a Saiyan. But he can only surpass that and become exceptional once he um, recognized the energetic principles. And this is the whole narrative afterwards of Dragon Ball Z and beyond is, you know, taking that energetic principles and continuing to move forward and forward and pushing yourself beyond the physical limitations to incredible degrees. Which is, um, you know, you're not going to be able to do the Kamehameha anytime soon if you're learning this kind of stuff but it's an allegory to what the general pathway to you know perfection is like you have to master the fundamentals then you get into the energetic practices and you excel in that way as well um so this is what traditional kung fu schools teach they generally teach you from the beginning the fundamentals, the physicality, they train you physically. And then once you ascend to a certain level, then they teach you the energetic principles in order to excel beyond your current levels. Um, the problem with the current scope of traditional Kung Fu systems, and like if you go to Shaolin Temple now, which is a completely different place than what you would imagine, um, you know, these are going to be systems that aren't based around actual fighting and actual sparring. It becomes more of like a dance routine, which is perfectly fine. You can learn a lot about fighting through dancing because you are getting in touch with your coordination and your skill and your speed and your just general physical shape in general, which is a very solid foundation in fighting. But it's not going to apply to MMA because those people are fighting every single day and they are pushing themselves in the physical way, right? And they are also used to being hit in the face multiple times. So, um, you know, the, the if you even if you master these arts, if you get hit in the face, you're going to become, you're going to get knocked out because you're not used to it. So it becomes kind of irrelevant no matter how much you train yourself. If you're not used to getting punched and hit all the time, you're not going to be able to compete against these MMA fighters. But that doesn't mean that these arts and these techniques of energetic practices aren't useful in any way. It just means they aren't utilized uh, to their best ability when looking at a professional fight context. So if you want to take a deeper look into this in... MMA. Um, let's take a look at like a fighter like Israel Adesanya, the style bender, who's getting a lot of hate right now because he's a fighter that isn't utilizing traditional MMA styles. He utilizes a lot of styles from different martial arts systems. He began in Taekwondo, actually, which is a Korean style of fighting, if you didn't know. But he utilizes these different styles and there are a lot of MMA fighters that are pissed off about him and his existence because he is a very defensive fighter. He does not like getting hit in the face all the time. He's very good at defending himself. So there's already a fixed 
mentality in the MMA community because he's going against the notion of just being the meathead fighter who rushes in and like does the jiu-jitsu moves and tackles and all this fucking meathead shit which is kind of annoying to watch it's not really um elegant i guess you would call it although it is functional definitely it it sort of takes the art away from the martial arts concepts which is kind of irrelevant when you're just trying to beat someone up um as efficiently as possible so he's kind of uh challenging that notion that martial arts needs to be this meathead art uh sport basically so that he gets a lot of hate for that which is uh showcasing the dogmatic path that mma is going down and, and this is primarily with jiu-jitsu as well jiu-jitsu is starting to get really popular very quickly and we're already seeing a tendency of jiu-jitsu becoming dogmatized and turned into what traditional martial arts have been going through the past 20 years which is becoming dogmatic, becoming scams for people to make money out of because it's a popular art form. It's a popular sport. It's a popular style. So people are going to take advantage of that. People need to understand that with MMA and any fighting style, and this is what Bruce Lee's philosophy was, is that these styles need to be shared and evolved in order for them to remain alive, right? If we don't continue to evolve and continue to learn different ways of fighting, then we're going to be stuck in a simple state, in a dogmatic state, and it's going to become rigid and not as powerful as it once was. This is the history, if you don't know the history of Shaolin Kung Fu, that was the story. In fact, Kung Fu in and of itself, the, the phrase just means mastery over a long period of time right it it's, doesn't mean like any specific style or like like crane fist technique it just means learning something over a very long period of time mastery over a long period of time these are lifetimes of arts so the art of martial arts is a long time to master it and it comes through learning different styles and learning different techniques from everywhere from anyone who is a good fighter it doesn't matter where they come from if you can learn from different things and uh, meld them together you will create a very strong and powerful style this was bruce lee's philosophy and he was the one who basically led to the creation of mma and why mma is so powerful in terms of learning it but now it's becoming dogmatized and turned into a rigid system and people think it needs to be a certain way and this is why people are getting mad about people like israel adesanya for just existing in the fighting arena because he's doing something different regardless of if it works or not so this is what i want to touch upon as well um so if you look at the history of shaolin kung fu the reason why it existed was because you had these buddhist monks living in a monastery they were peaceful monks they didn't fight or anything but they kept getting robbed they kept getting taken advantage of by thugs and bandits who were around the area so they realized okay we need to defend ourselves we need to find a way to defend ourselves against these bandits and what they did was they gathered professional martial artists from the time to gather together and share ideas, share styles, share all the different styles. And they learned and compiled them into one specific style. That's This is the exact same thing that happened in MMA. It took all these different styles from all around the world. They took Muay Thai, they took Kung Fu, they took Western boxing, they took Jiu Jitsu, they took Karate, and they put them all together and made their own new style. And what's happening now with MMA, like what happened with Kung Fu, is that it uh, became a rigid construct that became detrimental to its own progress as uh, the best martial art, pretty much. And this is the problem when you're trying to evolve and become a superior fighter, is when you disregard other styles because you think yours is the best. This is a very dangerous mentality to go on because it's only going to limit yourself from improving as a fighter. Or And this can apply to anything in life. This is why the, the classical music community, if you want to call it that, has basically become irrelevant 
in the last 100 years because they refused to acknowledge the new styles of music that were coming out from like jazz and rock and heavy metal and disregarding them as being irrelevant because they thought they were superior because they had this and this technicalities. Well, guess what? Guess what happened to jazz? It overpassed them in terms of listenability and popularity and music theory as well. Jazz became the the amalgamation of all these different music styles and became its own music theory. Now, jazz is the same thing that happened to classical music. It's become this dogmatic, um, you know, non-evolving state of for academics to study and it's become this very rigid construct and this is the path that MMA is heading down which needs to be looked into this is a different subject altogether but I'm tying it into this video because it's important to talk about because I think that neglecting the reality of chi the reality of energy work is going to actually limit MMA in the future and I'm going to say this because there will be a fighter at some point who does utilize both of these contexts in a very professional and legitimate way and he's going to destroy he or she it could be a woman um they are going to destroy all these mma fighters that's my prediction the reason why all these tai chi guys and all these traditional kung fu people who utilize energy are getting destroyed by mma fighters is because they have the same mentality as where mma is going towards where they think they are better because they have the more traditional root and they aren't learning from other styles to, to help and better themselves. And that's sort of limiting themselves. But now things are starting to change. Shaolin Kung Fu is actually, the Shaolin Temple is starting to borrow elements from Western boxing and Western styles from MMA in order to improve their styles. So there's going to be a shift that people need to recognize, especially in the MMA community. And this is a sign when you see people like Israel Adesanya, who is heavily influenced by anime. Um, he's very, if you listen to his interviews, he's very in touch with energetic principles in a certain way. Um, he doesn't talk about it outright, but there is a spiritual connotation to his art, and it's why he's a superior fighter, and he's why he's such a hot topic right now, and why there's so many meathead MMA fighters who don't like him because of the fact that he is pushing the threshold of skill and there's going to be a shift especially in the fighting community and MMA and martial arts in general that I think is going to be great because it's going to shift um, what's becoming a very dogmatic and rigid construct of MMA and it's going to change that construct and I'm excited to see that because I think that it needs a change it needs a shift um, just like Muhammad Ali changed boxing, just like Mike Tyson changed boxing, just like Bruce Lee changed Kung Fu, just like how um, now I think is Israel Adesanya, although he's, it's sort of, he's in the middle of his career right now, so only history will be able to tell where things will continue on from here, right? There are a lot of elements from all forms of martial arts that are being utilized, and I think the energetic co components can be utilized as well if there is a martial artist who utilizes them in the proper context, um, just completely disregarding them and ignoring them and thinking that it's stupid is limiting yourself, right? As someone who has practiced martial arts myself, even as an amateur, when I utilize the energetic components into like a punch, it might increase it by like maybe 10% in terms of power, right? Which isn't much, but it's still improving it. It's still adding an extra energetic component. It's still adding an extra strength to that punch. So I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. This is definitely a much longer video than I normally do, but it's been on my mind and I wanted to cover this subject with precision and making sure that I'm covering all varieties of these arts because they are very complex and intricate and there's a lot of things to cover if you want to look at it holistically and I am still learning a lot of these things as well so you know keep in mind that what I am saying is you know I'm very open to being challenged when people write hate comments and things like that and I'm very grateful for them in fact I 
encourage people to continue hating on me and I'm getting a lot more. So I'm very happy about that because those kinds of comments drive me to improve upon myself and drive me to learn more. Because when someone challenges me and says, you're wrong, you're an idiot, I get like pumped up. I'm like, no, I'm not a fucking idiot. I'll prove to you that I'm not an idiot and I'm going to find the truth and I'm going to become even smarter. So please continue to hate on me. I really appreciate it. So thank you and peace.